Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Party. Today we're quilting the corners of our rainbow log cabin quilt. We're in the home stretch and this is actually going to be the easiest part of the quilt to quilt because we're right on the edges and there's far less bulk of the quilt in the arm of the machine. So if you reach this point, give yourself a pat on the back and know that it's going to be really quick and simple to finish from here. So let's jump on the machine and mark our design and quilt it together. So now we have finished up the center of our quilt. We got all of those lines stitched and they're looking great. And now it's time to just focus on these corners. So super, super simple design that we're gonna be stitching here. It's basically a corner, a bright star, and having the lines radiate from the corner and then match up with these green points here in the quilt. So pretty much all of our quilting within this quilt has been lined up somehow with the patchwork design. And I really think that that's a good lesson to learn, try out with other quilt designs. Uh, the piecing is there and whenever we run lines off of it or uh, have lines hit points specifically, I think that really accents the piecing in a really nice way. So I've lined up and done half the lines through this section. So it's gonna be a total of five lines that I can stitch. I'm gonna shift it to the machine and go on ahead and quilt along them. And then I'll shift it back to mark the second half. And the reason is it just really does start to get bulky here in the corner as more and more layers of tape stack on top of one another. And it really won't take very much time at all to shift this in, stitch these lines, mark the other half, and stitch the rest of them too. So let's get started quilting. So I'm getting started stitching along the edge of this first piece of tape. And as you can see, most of the quilt is here behind the machine. The bulk of the quilt is on the table and it's really, really feels easy to be stitching now because I'm just working on this one little corner. I've got the tail end here off the edge of the table. It's kind of sitting in my lap a bit, but just like before, I'm keeping it fluffy. I'm keeping it on the table and still continuing to stop every little while and uh, pull up on it a little bit and make sure it stays nice and light. And then I'm just running my needle right along the edge of that tape, just lining up and trying to keep that straight line nice and straight. Now I have changed thread colors again. The thread color I'm using right now is apple green and that's 5730 isocord thread. I think this is gonna look really, really good over the blue, purple, red, and black. Uh, it's a lot of different contrasts there and definitely stands out, but that's nice. Um, green and purple and blue are all ter tertiary colors, meaning that they're right next to each other on the color wheel. It opposes red completely. It's a completely opposite of the color wheel, but red and green are Christmas colors. They go together really well too. So I think it's a good thread color to use throughout. And you know, trying to break thread with each space with each color change, you know, like between each color as I stitch this line would be really tricky and time consuming. So I like the idea of picking one contrasting thread color and stitching it throughout the section. Of course, you could also pick just one thread color for the whole quilt and not have to change colors at all. It's entirely, entirely up to you. Okay, so the trickiest part here is going to be the, app, the dead corner. This spot here, right on the edge of the quilt. And the reason that's tricky is because there's, honestly, there's no stability with it at all. Um, right now, there's, you know, we've stitched in the ditch around the block, but really there's nothing out here that is holding this in place. And I wanna make sure that I'm stitching right up to the corner of the fabric and then off into the batting area. And this first line is really gonna do a lot of, to stabilize this whole area. So I'm gonna try and stitch down and see the, how the tape is pulling on the batting a little bit. So this can get a little messy, I'll be honest. So I'm gonna just take my scissors and cut away that tape, making sure I'm not cutting the quilt, just so I can definitely see the corner of that black fabric and make sure I'm just gonna stitch right over it and off into the batting area. There we go. And that looks good. And if you go into the batting area a good couple of inches, then you can just break your thread close. See, I'm just gonna clip these thread tails close. I'm not going to bother to tie off and bury those thread tails because it's off in the batting area and we will secure that when we do our victory lap stitching 
after we finished quilting all of these corners. Okay, so shifting the quilt back into the machine, I'm gonna remove that first piece of tape. Just take that straight off, try and have it not mess up this corner. That's the thing, with each piece of tape, you get to take off, every time you stitch a piece, stitch along the tape in Bright Star, you always get to take off and remove that tape for the next line. So I'm working on my second straight line in this section. And one thing I just noticed is, you know, we're actually gonna end up with a little bit more bulk in the arm of the machine as we stitch these lines, uh, because we're always stitching it from the center to the outside edge. So when, especially when you're stitching these last two, things might get bulky again. So you just have to continually watch out for that. Shift the quilt around, make sure it, it, your walking foot is able to feed and walk the quilt forward. I'm putting very little pressure on the quilt itself. Mostly what my hands are doing is just helping to guide and keep that needle lined up with the edge of the tape. You know, if I take my hands off the quilt completely, I wanna see it moving. I wanna see it feeding through the arm of the machine. That's a sign that the walking foot and the feed dogs on the machine are able to do their job properly. Here we go. And again, the tricky spot is getting down to this corner. I just think that it's kind of important just to take your time, you know, really focus on what you're doing, see how things are lining up, make sure it's a nice straight line all the way down to that corner. And then if things start to go a little wonky or you feel some ripples or pleats, and definitely watch out for the edges of your backing fabric. It's so easy to have your backing fabric flip over and accidentally stitch it to the back of your quilt. So definitely watch out for that. So slow and steady, just finish off that next line. And again, stitch right off into the batting area and that's gonna secure your thread tails. What we're gonna do after we finish quilting all of the corners and all of the quilting is complete, go around the quilt with a victory lap and that stitching really locks the edge of the quilt firmly in place, locks all of those lines of stitching together. And then also, you know, you're gonna go around it again to bind it. So it really is secure. So now I'm gonna remove that next piece of tape. I don't know about you, but for me, ripping off the tape, I don't know, it feels like an accomplishment. <laughs> like I'm opening a present. With each new line that I stitch, it feels like I'm getting somewhere and moving on with the whole process. And then I am able to see uh, the really nice effect that the quilting design is creating on the surface of the quilt too. So I'm just gonna continue shifting this into the arm of the machine pulling up thread and stitching along these lines. And I'll meet you back here when we're ready to stitch the second half of this corner and talk you through that process too. So I've taped my second set of lines and I wanted to do a comparison of different widths of tape just to see which one felt easier. I taped the first set of lines with this half inch painter's tape the second set of lines I taped with the one inch regular masking tape. And I think the masking tape is my favorite, especially when doing these really, really long lines. The masking tape is thicker and it doesn't seem to bend and wiggle as much and I feel like I'm getting a straighter line. Now, I mean, of course, unless I took a yardstick to this thing, I won't really know for sure, but it just, it didn't feel as bendy, if that makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to shift this in, just a really simple rotation here just to get it into the arm of the machine. And this is going to feel really easy. This second set of lines, uh, there's going to be less quilt in the arm, and that's going to make it feel that much easier to knock out these lines. So I'm pulling up thread here right on the tip of that green square, and pull on that top thread, bring that bright green thread up to the surface. It's just one of those habits that really can help your quilts. You know, your machine always has a chance of sucking the thread tails down into the machine, and then it makes that terrible sound, you know, it kind of garbles up, and uh, you know, it, it makes a mess on the back of your quilt. So by pulling those thread tails up, you're ensuring you're getting started on the right foot. You're not gonna take three stitches and then have to stop and rip out a big bird's nest, you know, where the threads got pulled in and tangled. So definitely get into the habit of doing that. It makes a big difference on your quilts. It makes the front look just as good as the back, or the back just as good as the front, both ways. <laughs> 
so here I'm working my way down the tape, just running my needle right along it. I see that I have a little bit of a pleat right here where the fabrics are kind of folding over and it's caused by the tape. So I'm just gonna lift that tape slightly, smooth down the fabric and then replace it. It's probably gonna end up shifting that little bit, bit of bunchy fabric further down, but that's okay. I can just keep lifting it up and shifting it downward. This is the one thing about working with tape that's a little tricky, and that is that you know it's so sticky that it wants to hold, and sometimes the fabric might not be as flat as you want it to be. It also, some of this struggle that I've been having, you know, with getting the tape nice and flat to the surface and not having any kind of bubbles or pleats in the fabric, some of this is caused by my super squishy batting here. And that's just, you know, honestly, if you had a flatter batting, you probably wouldn't be having this issue at all. So there we go, that looks much better. And get back to stitching. And I do feel like the one inch wide masking tape is just a little bit easier to pull up and replace. I'm not quite so worried about it uh, shifting and being you know, bent or wobbly on the surface. Uh, I feel like it's holding a straighter line, but you know, that might just be in my head. <laughs> I'll be honest, uh, you know, the, the half inch just felt a little bit more wobbly and I could have easily bent it into curves without even meaning to. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a mess here. I'm gonna take out this pen and try and sort it out. I might even go all the way back here and replace this piece of tape to smooth everything out. And whenever you wanna do any kind of shift, I don't have enough table here to the front of the machine to really work. So I'm gonna rotate the whole quilt around so that way the quilt's on the tabletop and flatten it out as much as I can. And now I'm gonna lift this entire piece of tape. So this is just, you know, an issue that I ran into and I'd rather show it to you and show you how I'm working it out rather than try and, you know, cut this out of the video or whatever. Sometimes you're gonna have little issues with this and, and taping, you know, it is a faster method of marking, but it's not perfect. No method of marking is perfect. I could also take a long ruler and mark the straight line on the surface of the quilt, but uh, you know, it's good to try new things and experiment. It's certainly straight lines, Super, super easy to mark with the tape. So that adjustment just took a few seconds and now I'm back on track and that tape is nice and flat and the fabric's no longer bunching up underneath it. And this is just one of those things, you just need to be observant, you know, be constantly looking at your quilt, be feeling underneath. You know, when you're out here on the edges, it's very easy to flip your backing fabric under and have that be stitched to the back of your quilt. So really maintain your focus. You're right here at the end and I know it's super exciting and you can, you know, so close to the end you can probably taste it. But, you know, maintain your focus and still, you know, slow and steady. So that way you don't end up with any issues uh, that you then have to take more time to rip out and mess with. Okay, so just like before, I'm having a little bit of an issue here with the tape getting caught up in the batting. I think I just have too much tape here. I'm gonna cut that a little shorter and then I can see I have just a little bit of a ripple here. So I'm gonna work this out, just smoothing it out. There we go. That looks much better, okay. And some of this might be hard to see in the video because it's black fabric. It's a little bit tricky to see, you know, just Pay attention if you see some ripples, and, you know, and also to understand that it's not the end of the world if you do stitch some ripples into your quilt, if you accidentally do stitch a pleat or two in it. I was looking at my backing fabric and I think I ended up with a few pleats uh, stitched over in the backing and I'm not gonna worry about it because ultimately I know the quilt is still going to be successful. You know, it's still gonna be a warm, squishy, wonderful, uh, really, really soft quilt to enjoy on my bed. So uh, please don't obsess about the little imperfections. They happen with every single quilt and it's not the end of the world. Okay, this piece is just kind of driving me crazy. So I'm actually gonna just pull it all the way up. That's okay. I've got my needle in the down position and I know what I'm aiming for. I am aiming for this corner. So I'm gonna pull back all of the stuff, get it out of my way. Sometimes, you know, Fiddling with something makes it better and sometimes fiddling with it something, I think, I think I'm probably made that a little bit worse. It's not the end of the world though. 
I'm aiming for that corner. I'm gonna hit that corner and stitch right off into the batting. And if that last little five inches of that line curved a bit, I'm not gonna worry about it. You know, sometimes little issues and mistakes give your quilt more character and you gotta just allow it to have that character and accept that, you know, nothing is perfect. Even, you know, when I'm stitching a show quilt, when I'm making, you know, big elaborate show quilts, there's still issues, there's still mistakes and they, I can let them drive me crazy and kind of get me stuck or I can keep going with it and just accept that that's part of the process too. Okay, so now I'm ripping off that whole piece, nice long piece off the quilt and I can shift over and start the next line. So I hope that you can see how this process is gonna work through the corners. It's really just gonna be one line at a time, one step at a time. It's feeling so much easier to work with the quilt on the machine at this stage. I don't have any of those big giant pull throughs on the arm, you know, we're through that whole section. We're not having to worry about anything like that. The trickiest part is just making sure the quilt stays flat and you don't get ripples and pleats as you quilt out to this corner. But just as I just showed you, you know, sometimes the tape's gonna work. Sometimes you might have to pull it off completely. You might have to take a yardstick and mark this instead. Play with it, make it your own. Don't be afraid of making mistakes and don't be afraid of there being, you know, little stitch issues or little pleats in your quilt. Mine has them too and I'm gonna love it just the same way when it's done. And here's what it looked like whenever I finished all of the quilting on my rainbow log cabin quilt. So that's it for this video. I hope you've learned a lot about walking foot style quilting as we've created this beautiful rainbow log cabin quilt together. The next step is to bind the edges. So definitely make sure to check out my tutorials on preparing for binding and binding the edges of the quilt. Uh, this is a really important step just to make sure that the quilt is finished and ready to be used and enjoyed. And of course, I've got to remind you, this is not the end of our machine quilting party in 2018. We are continuing to quilt along with the beautiful Marvelous Mosaic quilt. And up next, we're gonna begin the Prism Path Baby Quilt. So if you'd like to continue to party along with us and learn more about walking foot style quilting, make sure to join in the fun and learn how to quilt these quilts too. You can find all of the quilt patterns for quilting along with us in the book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. Check it out at leahday.com slash walking foot. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you don't miss the next video coming out soon. Until next time, let's go quilt.